you do want to hedge the bets. AI is too important of an area where you just go one path. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Hi Team Value, JJ here, welcome back. Well today I'm going to react to a recent interview with Alibaba Chair Joe Tsai He's talking about the opportunities for AI and Alibaba in a number of different areas. They're clearly doing a lot already. Can it spark growth and for the stock price in the future? It remains to be seen, all that. But let's see what he has to say about it. Alibaba is involved in AI in three different ways. Number one, just fundamentally as a technology company, as a pioneer in technology, we believe in continuous advancement of machine intelligence, that machines will get smarter and smarter. Uh, a lot of people talk about artificial general intelligence, that this ideal of reaching AGI. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure at some point we will have machines that could have some aspect of AGI based on however you define AGI. In certain respects, machines can become even smarter than human beings, right? So we believe in this ideal of AGI and continuous development. And today with the idea of scaling law, uh, which means that the more resources, whether it's data resources or computing power that you put into it, yep. uh, the marginal return in terms of performance of these large language models does not diminish. It continues, and in fact, it actually grows in a super linear way. That's pretty scary uh, because it just means that the machine can get uh, you know, smarter and smarter as long as you feed the machine with data. So that's number one. As, as a pure ideal, we're, we're going for it. And Alibaba has developed our proprietary large language model called Tong Yi Chen Wen, yep. which is actually one of the leading models in China. Yep. And in certain respects, we are competitive globally uh, as well. That's number one. Well, there was quite a lot in that. First, you explained about AGI and that are indeed different ways to think about AGI, different definitions of what AGI is. A lot of people think of it as if, you know, artificial intelligence could be AGI if it can do everything better than humans. And that includes driving, that includes the things in the physical world. So clearly we're not quite there yet. And another way is that Artificial intelligence is better in the cognitive realm, better than humans in every way. And I think we could be getting there in terms of that. If we look at how these things are tested, they're passing exams, they're passing high level exams, but clearly not all the way there yet. But there are other arguments to say, will we even know when that happens? Alibaba's clearly working on this. As he said, they've got their own large language model, which is competitive. What's often talked about in the West, we focused on OpenAI, Microsoft and Google and Amazon, even in Meta, their large language models and their AI capabilities. But China's not so much focused on, but there's definitely things going on in China, including Alibaba. But they've also got the cloud business. They've got the compute to back it up. So they're clearly focusing on AI here quite a lot. He's talking it up, but it's not just talk. They definitely do seem to have things going on. Number two is uh, we have a cloud computing business. Um, I think Alibaba is actually, uh, you know, probably one of the very few companies that both have proprietary in-house AI capability yep. and also a cloud business. If you think about it, Microsoft and OpenAI are two separate companies. They have a very nice partnership right now, but Maybe in the future, they'll you know, maybe go their yeah. separate ways. So Microsoft actually does not have their proprietary development of AI. They basically outsourced it to open AI. Right. Amazon is in the cloud business, but they don't have proprietary AI that yeah. they develop themselves in terms of large language model. Yeah. Facebook has their large language model, which they open source, Llama, yeah. but they don't have a cloud business. The only American company that has sort of both internal in-house is Google, but Google is number three in cloud and AI is, you know, some say they're not as good as open AI, right? But so uh, you, you come to China, you look at Alibaba, we're the only company that both run a leading cloud business and also we're competitive in AI. Um, so that combination between AI and cloud is important. Why? Because anybody that uses your AI, so we have both open source versions of our AI, um, and also our uh, more proprietary version where people can access through APIs. A anybody that uses our AI will need to use cloud computing power. They need compute, all right? 
We also developed the largest open source AI community called ModelScope, yeah. uh, which has a lot of open so other people's open source AIs in that marketplace. So when they use the open source AI within our community, they need compute. Yeah. So they need computing power. That's how we, we can grow our cloud computing revenue. In the last quarter, our AI revenues uh, in the cloud business have grown triple digits. Right. So that's very exciting to us, right? So the combination of AI and cloud is a terrific combination. Uh, so that's the second way. I think the point is well made here that Alibaba's got everything in-house there, that they're growing, and it's aimed at towards growing their cloud business, which has been slow growth. He's talking about ramping that up, and investors will be looking at this to see if this ramps up over the next few quarters and years. And not just in-house, he's talking about the open source model and how others have to use their cloud business whether this can ramp up and when they can get double digit growth going in cloud remains to be seen if that will be happen over the coming quarters over the coming years but that's probably what they need in terms of growing the cloud business because it's growing at single digits low single digits it has been the US companies are growing at double digits well into the 20s so they'll be wanting to get that ramped up to the 20s or at least double digits high double digits soon and he's implying that this could happen because of ai the third way we're we're involved in ai and it's important to us now if you're getting value out of this episode so far i'd really appreciate it if you remember to smash that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people and if you're new here do consider subscribing so you get more of this kind of content in the future we can apply ai in a numerous vertical applications and if you think about e-commerce the scenarios in e-commerce in terms of recommending what to buy you know if you want to buy somewhat something uh, for your friends you know, you need recommendations for their birthday, let's say. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you want to walk into a virtual fitting room to see how some so clothing fits on you. Uh, you need personal assistance. You need customer service. A lot of those things can be drastically enhanced by AI technology. And when we look at our use cases in e-commerce, it's incredible. We, we just see so much upside that AI could be uh, applied. And so through these ways, we're involved in AI, and that's why we're all in. So what he said about AI helping in e-commerce there, their vast e-commerce, because they are really e-commerce and clouds. He talked about AI, you know, being involved in both of those things. And that is, I think, more like Amazon. If you think what, what Amazon could be doing with AI, is doing with AI, it could help out in recommendations for e-commerce and many other ways, lots of ways that we can think of and other things that were, nobody's thought of yet. So Alibaba's really got all of these things together, which none of those US companies do have all of these th things together. There are elements of e-commerce within Meta, within Google, but really, Alibaba's got all of these things together. They're the entity in China that does have the cloud. They have AI going on, leading towards AGI whenever that does happen, and e-commerce. So they've got all these things working together, as he said. So really, there is an advantage there and a possibility that that could add to growth, stimulate growth further from where it is now. It isn't yet if we look at the earnings. And I did go through the earnings in other videos, which I'll link to. They're not growing at the pace that they have in the past, but they'll be wanting to have this all work together to to generate some growth. We've seen in the US how AI is stimulating growth in a number of different areas. Well, on the hardware side with NVIDIA, which is just going gangbusters, and their clients are, of course, these companies that are developing AI. And so Alibaba is a company that's doing all that together. They're not generating the hardware, of course, but they do do all the other things. So whether that can translate to the financials to growth it remains to be seen i've got no opinion one way or the other but i'll be looking to see how it goes and i'm not recommending alibaba buying the stock based on this i don't do that i'm not allowed to do that ali cloud is probably now the largest uh, platform in asia pacific um, so you're definitely very well positioned there but you aside from um, your own proprietary um, large language model uh, when you have also mm -hmm. made strategic investments in five other uh, large language models. And do you see synergy there? And how are you looking at the progress? Sure. Now, over on the Art of Value Patreon, I do talk about Alibaba more and many other topics to do with investing that I don't share anywhere else. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description and see you over there. There's definitely synergies in that. Uh, for, well, first, 
besides being a parent, we're uncles or aunties to five other large language models uh, through which we have relationships. Uh, when they train their models, they have to use our cloud computing resource. And uh, that helps our mm. cloud business. Right. Uh, but it's also a way of hedging our bets. We've learned through the last 25 years that, you know, you go, do you go proprietary? Do you go open source? Do you invest in somebody else? Uh, if you can afford it, yeah. a lot of people can't. If you can afford it, you do want to hedge the bets. AI is too important of an area where you just go one path. Um, I, it reminds me of uh, Yogi Berra, Yogi Berra saying, uh, he said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if people got the joke, but uh, <laughs> when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Take so I, I think that's, um, you know, we want to be, we, we want to be well hedged. But having said that, obviously our proprietary large language model is very, very important to us and a lot of resources being put into that. Okay. So this is what he really means by going all in on AI here. They've got that proprietary model of their own AI and towards AGI, but they've got other bets as well. They've got other investments. And he's making that joke about the fork in the road when you get to a fork of the road, take it, Mitch, which they're taking both forks here, going down both directions or five directions or six directions, hedging their bets, which he said they've done over time. So really, one of those should work out, or a few of those work out. So they've really got a lot of bases covered here in terms of possible future growth and using that cloud and having growth in that cloud to stimulate, to help with the growth of AI. Now, I'd love to know what you think about what Joe Tsai said here. Do you think that the AI that they're working on in those different areas that he mentioned is going to be enough to spark growth, double digit growth they're aiming for in Alibaba again? Do you think it's going to work? Let me know in the comments. Now, I do need you to know that nothing said here is financial advice. This is just for general education and entertainment purposes. Do your own work and analysis or seek professional financial advice before making any investment decision. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm going to put a link here to a recent episode I made about what co-founder Jack Ma's been saying recently about Alibaba. He seems to be coming back on the scene. So go and see that now if you haven't already. I'll put links in the description to that and related videos as well. And thanks to everybody for watching or listening. And I'll see you in the next one.